I'm talking with Rebecca Lawson, who's Senior Director of Product Marketing at Juniper. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. So it is so great to have you here because uh, we're in a very tumultuous time in security, it seems. It seems like the threats are coming at us from all sides and the industry is responding. So it makes, mm -hmm. for instance, the RSA show this year uh, uh, bigger than it's ever been and yeah. more vendors and even as an analyst whose full-time job is to keep track of all of this, I'm falling behind. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredibly complex world and, yeah. um, you know, it, Everybody's quick to talk about how just, you know, messages and technologies and, and, and threat attacks, it's such a complex environment. And um, it's great to see how the industry is evolving quickly mm -hmm. and coming to a kind of collective acknowledgement that we really all have to work together to figure out better ways of moving forward uh, with uh, network technologies and what it means for us as a society to connect and what mm -hmm. it means uh, you know, for the bad guys and, and the criminals um, who are also co-evolving in mm -hmm. kind of a different, uh, in a different world with a different playing field, different rules. So it's a very interesting time when you think about the technology, the money, uh, and all the people. and. Uh, it, it's really touching everyone. Security seems like it's gotten very personal too, I've noticed. I've heard that mm -hmm. word a lot in the last few days. People talking about how it really hits home when your kids' credit cards have been yeah. you know, hacked yeah. or something. And um, there's always seems to be a seminal event in somebody's personal life that makes them realize, wow, this is really a, a big and complex issue. Yeah, it feeds into something I've noticed and, and gotten accustomed to after all these years of telling people to build security in first before mm -hmm. you do anything. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that that's not going to happen because yeah. people don't take security seriously until they felt it personally. At the corporate yeah. level, you know, even if another retailer gets a major hack, you know, a very similar retailer says, well, that's not us. You know, they're not going to attack us next. Yeah. It's, we just sell some, somebody from... One of the big home improvement stores says, we just sell hammers. Why would anybody attack us? It's like, Hello. Why would you want one of those yeah. hammers? Yeah, it's exactly. Hard to know. Yeah, so we, so at Juniper, we're, we're really trying to take a, a longer term view and try to tune our technology to where we think our customers, whether they're enterprises or service providers, are, are going to need to move into the future. And one thing we know for sure is we don't know a lot about what's going to happen in the future as, with regard to the threat landscape and the threat attackers because they evolve. The adversary evolves ahead of us. It, that's a dynamic we're not going to see change soon until the economics change and they're not going to change because there's no law guiding them. Mm -hmm. So it's always going to be a really high return on investment if you're a hacker or if you want to be disruptive. Even if you don't want to earn money, you can be disruptive. You know, at Juniper, our, our, we've, got a, we've got a great mission statement. It's to connect everything and empower everyone, which is just a hugely, you know, it's a lofty mission statement, but mm -hmm. it's great because it really is what we want to do in the networking world. And we're basically a networking company mm -hmm. that sells very secure network technology. Um, we have a focus on fast growth, you know, network dependent organizations. Everyone's dependent, but some people are even more dependent. Well, let me first speak to a couple fundamentals, and it's worth thinking about the fundamentals of the infrastructure because, uh, first, and and then understanding within a, um, a solid, well-architected -arch network infrastructure, how you can then start to layer on top different technologies that are appropriate for your organization, may not be for somebody else's. So I think the fundamental principle is that we know that um, networks exist to move packets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a transport system. And when you're moving packets, two things matter. They need to move really fast, and they need to be really secure, incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. Just like the roadways, you know, when you build the interstate, you know, the idea is the whole purpose of the interstates is to move, you know, transport quickly, mm -hmm. but also you got to have safety in mind because it doesn't make sense to just let people drive 150 miles an hour down the I-80 mm -hmm. um, or to have uh, inappropriate vehicles moving down the freeways or having a big truck move down a small road. So, so it's not unlike that where you want to get somewhere fast and efficiently, but you also need to get there safe. And reliably. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. So we're always, um, at Juniper, we're working that balance between speed and security uh, because our customers are all about moving a lot of data from here to there and keeping it safe. And just as we're, the threats are evolving, the security technology is evolving, networking technology is going yeah. through a revolution on its own mm -hmm. with software-defined networking, mm -hmm. networking in the cloud, 
uh, which is, you know, it, it just adds to the complexity of, of an ultimate buyer's decision making. Yeah. Simplicity, whew, gone. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> it's always, yeah. SDN is wonderful, NFE is great. They're all emerging technologies. We're always going to see emerging technologies. So we want to keep our eyes on the basic principles of saying, how can we help our customers um, uh, control what they can control, mm -hmm. uh, keep their network security um, at pace with their networking technology so that their businesses or organizations can move forward fast, um, can fail fast when, when, you know, when failure happens and can recover quickly. For a company like Juniper, what's a, a, I guess a big picture way to look at the security issues? Well, so um, specifically around network security, which mm -hmm. is where we play, um, I guess the big, the big picture is that a, a lot of this has to do with timing. And um, it, time is kind of an interesting construct um, because not only do you have to move packets quickly and securely, but there's a time element to uh, threat actions, there's a time element to how attacks play out. Uh, sometimes that time is fast, sometimes it's not fast. You know, APTs can, can play out over months or years. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so the the trick we think is in is first setting yourself up with um, technology that can that doesn't get in the way from a speed perspective. So you need really fast equipment, and you know we do that. We build super fast equipment. We just announced um, a two terabit um, iMix network platform. Wow. So it's fast, and people go like, "Whoa, that's it." it it's really, it's, um, we say it's fast, but really it's, it's about throughput. We want to just push as much through our firewalls and through our network um, services platform as possible because that's where growth, that's where you gain growth. Mm -hmm. And um, so fast equipment is part of it. Uh, the, the other part of it is how quickly you can respond to threats. And so we know that um, you know, bet between zero days, some threats happen very, very quickly because as soon as something is known in the wild, as soon as a researcher finds whatever it might be, command and control server or software vulnerability, um, there's a race between how much money can be extracted from companies that mm -hmm. don't have that vulnerability in check or don't understand that that traffic's going out to a command yeah. and control server. There's a race between when that data is known and when you can take action on it. And that's the big game right now that we're seeing with threat intelligence. Yep. There are um, a incredibly great, there's an incredibly broad and uh, robust community of threat intelligence providers now out mm -hmm. on the scene. Um, I've been talking to a lot of them. It's really interesting work. It's got, a, you know, I think one of the most interesting statistics that we've seen in the past couple of weeks is, is how much the threat intelligence out in the market today does not overlap. Mm. And so that what, what it tells us is the security research community is, not, is just barely able to keep up with uh, the inventory of at any one moment, what are those threats and vulnerabilities and how are those expressed as machine readable uh, data so that if you, as a you know, researcher, find one, one really interesting bit of data, you can get that out to your syndicate, out to your subscribers, mm -hmm. um, and then for them to be able to make sense of that. So uh, we're working with a lot of threat uh, intel organizations because we want to pull in threat information and make that immediately available for threat response at the um, point of enforcement, mm -hmm. either a firewall, a switch, router, wherever that may be, we're really looking at how much time does it take to put the defense in place. And we're trying to move that. We've now crossed into um, the one minute zone. We can get data um, from anywhere in the world to an enforcement point in less than 60 seconds. And um, which is great that it's fast, but it's also even more important is it's re recurring because um, the what's uh, a threat today may not be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what a threat yesterday was may not be today. So these things turn over really quickly. Another great stat from the Verizon's data breach uh, report that they released this week, which is always a great read, mm -hmm. is how quickly IP addresses turn over. And I think their stat was something around 24 hours that there's, you know, people are flipping IP addresses. So all this stuff is happening. It's I think we have a tendency to think of these in, in snapshots that say, well, here are all the threats out there. Okay, well, now we're five seconds down the road. Here and here are all the threats. So there's this, we have to be able to keep up with a streaming 
uh, set of data that has to be, you know, it has to be uh, deduped, it's got to be normalized, it's got to go through machine learning, we've got to make sure there's, you know, low po fa false positives, and then do something with it. And you're either going to take that data and pull it into your SIM or some type of analytics platform, and or you're going to take that data and push it out so you can take an action and block block a threat, but block some kind of uh, you know uh, breach or incident, whatever you yep. want to block, yep. or redirect. You want to take some other smart action. You want to say, you know, that thing is a little fishy. We're just going to send it through, you know, an IPS or some other deep packet inspection. Um, so we are starting to really close that gap, and we're very interested in central control, distributed threat intel, and telemetry to reduce the time it takes, reduce the window of having any particular threat action be successful. Um, we have some low-hanging fruit today because Verizon continuously reports on the average dwell time of, a, of an attacker once they're in the network, mm -hmm. and it's still you know over 200 days. Yeah. So there's plenty of room for improvement yeah. for today's <laughs> operations. Say so. Yeah. Right. Yes. And you know some organizations have been affected for years. Mm -hmm. So if we can get that down to a week, that would be a dramatic improvement for mm -hmm. everybody. It's that last you know minute type of attack scenario mm -hmm. trying to stop that that frightens me because most organizations over the years have been very reluctant to tie their enforcement points into any machine learned. Uh, decision making because it opens you up for denial of service or That's shooting true. yourself in the foot. That's true. Yeah, yeah you got to be smart about how you set this up. Yeah. You have to be smart about the data sources, the data processing, the machine learning. Um, the whole life cycle of that data is important to watch because it's easy to obfuscate it or to change it. Um, so, but we do think that some uh, time can be in our control, so we should you know, be able to work that and, and kind of exercise that muscle as defenders to say, let's just make it as hard as possible, let's close the window as much as possible. So we, fast equipment helps, fast threat response and um, uh, uh, data threat intelligence um, at, used in an actionable way at the enforcement point or used in an actionable way with your forensics teams or your, your uh, analytics and both, you know, really both of those. And then the third is automation. And uh, when we think about ne automating network services, all network services, including security, there's, um, there's also risk reward there. The reward is if you're smart about exactly how you want to automate certain processes and you want those to be part of your controls, you can do that today. There's great tools, there's great, um, there's all kinds of uh, great templates for doing that. So for example, if you want to say every time I want to spin up a new instance of Exchange or or uh, you know a new uh, web server or a new dev environment, press this button because we know exactly what that definition is going to be. It's going to do a zero touch provisioning of your entire stack, and if there are any issues, you've you've got you've got you know the recipe that you can always adjust. So, but doing things in a repeatable way helps you in two ways. One, everything goes faster, and second of all, it's auditable. And if there is a problem, you can change, you know, change it once and have that manifest across the board. One thing that worries me, especially on the threat intel side, or you know, really the IP reputation side, where it's just when it's just the IP addresses, um, there are now several sources that claim that they look at all four billion uh, IPv4 addresses, mm -hmm. like every minute, and, yeah. and give you that information about which ones are good and which ones are bad, which is all fine. But um, Juniper and the networking community is taking us to IPv6, where now yes. we have four quadrillion IP addresses, and the attackers could just use a new one every time. So everyone's right. unique. Yes. So another form of big data. Isn't yes. It? So yeah. there's a lot of data headed our way. There's the regular data, stuff that you and I are just passing back and forth, and news, and all the great things that the internet is about. Um, and then there's. Um, the big data of all the, you know, the, just the interconnects and all the signaling that has to go across, right. you know, with IPv6, man, the whole thing is going to explode again. Yeah. You know, just yeah. yep. everything, yeah. everything expands. That's like the That's universal right. truth, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you, maybe expands. you should get into the data storage business. I know, I know, it's true. <laughs> yeah. So with our technology, we built it with a lot of headroom. In fact, even on the, um, you know, I like to say that speeds and feeds are back in style because there, there's just no end to how much data at, at every, you know, at every different, the data 
at so many levels continues to expand. So we want to make sure that our customers can have the technology they need today and grow it two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. So I, I just call it headroom. So we build in throughput headroom so you can scale into it. Uh, we build in headroom for the threat intelligence, the amount of threat intelligence that our systems can manage. It's, right now it's a million records per firewall, just of threat intel, which is a huge amount of space. Most mm -hmm. people go, well, I don't have that much. Well, you will have that much data, <laughs> you know, yeah. just hang on. You will yeah. have, people don't have that much threat intel today, but in six months they will. Yeah. Because what I see happening is right now a lot of um, our customers are, they have threat intelligence sources. They're still trying to figure out, do they have the right ones? Are they enough? And now they're saying, how can we use these, this threat data that's so valuable but hard to put into action? So we want to take that data, push it to the firewall, have the firewall automatically update like this constantly. Mm -hmm. So that and you know, with your, uh, so that it informs your policies, so that it can make the right decision in microseconds. Microseconds matter. Rebecca, what's the best way for an enterprise to interact and engage with Juniper? If they, you know, they, they know they have a security issue, they know they need improvements in networking. Where do they start? I think the way, the best way to start is to. Um, to talk to us about the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the infrastructure, the road system that they're putting in place. What do they have today? We all have legacy. Everybody's got that. We know how to deal with that. Everybody's looking forward and saying, how, you know, I only have this much budget. How do mm -hmm. I spend that smartly? Um, and so we can help a lot with that. We, we really have designed our technology across networking, switches, routers, security to be um, to grow, it's always designed to, to grow. We, you know, which sounds a lot of people will say their technology is scalable, but really, really, it's designed to help our customers step into the next phase of wherever they're going. Whether they're a Web 2.0 and they know they need to scale like crazy, you know, do horizontal scaling or scale up or whatever that is, or if they know they're going to be part of a larger ecosystem of of, of uh, companies that want to sh uh, share threat data, for example. There's a lot of threat data consortiums pulling up, so mm -hmm. com um, coming onto the scene. So really the best way to engage with Juniper is to say, let's, let's just look at how we have designed our networks to date, who we interact with, what is our larger ecosystem, how can we set into place network services that are fast, that are secure, that are ready to handle the kind of workload and data throughput that we need, and to keep them secure in a way that also acknowledges that threats, te you know, 12 months from now or 24 months, we don't know what some of those threats are going to look like. So you've got to design it in a way that's open, acknowledging that when a new form of threat enters the scene, we have a way, uh, we've already established a way that as soon as we know about it, we can at least stop it. So at least we can stop them quickly uh, and take some other action before they have a chance to uh, penetrate into the organization. So, kind of in summary, we think you need high performance technology, really need to be smart about your threat response system holistically, and automation across all network services so that you can do things like zero touch provisioning and know that security is part of that provisioning. So that you can do uh, configuration changes and know that it's going to be consistent across all all of your network equipment, including your firewalls. So these are the kinds of things that the the more we can help our customers automate the processes that make their organization grow in a reliable and consistent manner, that's where I think customers are going to get a lot of value. Certain things will also will always have to be sort of handcrafted bespoke networks or certain types of security that are you know very specific. But there's a large amount of work that can be done to have repeatable processes, uh, uh, repeatable recipes, where they can automate things so that there's, um, so you have a better chance of, uh, of designing an environment that's easier to find the real problems when they do happen. We're always going to have a lot of problems, always going to have intrusions. The question is, how can we keep things automated so that when something bad does happen, A, we know it quickly, B, we can shut it down or redirect it or take some action. And C, we can recover. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really all about that, being strong, being well-designed, and um, uh, having it 
having your network and your network security work in sync and help you move forward in whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. For us, you know, again, I'll just get back to our mission, which is we want to connect everything. We're making a lot of strides there. A lot of things are connected mm -hmm. and empower everyone. Um, and so that, that's, Perfect. that's what we're doing. Thanks for yeah. the, the big vision from Juniper. All Thank right. you very much, Rebecca. Thank you very much.